Hello and welcome. People often ask me, what is the highest paying race in the game? So we're gonna review that. I've done a few of these, but it's been a while since I did it. And it's 100% bonus fame day. So it's a great day for me to collect more footage. This is my custom job in this car. Gotta have a seven on there. It's a fully upgraded McLaren MP4X. Uh, it's 1200 gold to buy this car. I wouldn't do that. You can see the upgrades there if you wanna fully upgrade it. We are in the MP4X exclusive series. Now, got to take a huge cut right off the start here. Uh, I really only take, generally I'm only going to be taking one big cut. That's about it. And the reason why we do that is because we need to pass 42 cars as fast as possible. That's going to trigger an endless part of this race. So uh, I call it the perpetual point. Once you, once you pass 42 cars, you can keep going forever if you've got the skills for it. And there's going to be a lot of warping ahead. We're about to do a warp. It's going to be seamless. The only way you can really tell is by the distance counter. I, I drive the same race line so much in this car, depending on traffic. So I'll have the word warp appear every single time we're skipping. Every time that word appears, we're skipping ahead another lap. Now, the reason why I say you shouldn't buy this is because there's been a limited series for this car that's run multiple times. And there was once a uh, recommended PR event called Formula Future. I don't know if they ever re-ran that. Maybe it was in the archives once upon a time. So with them running some really old events, hopefully we'll see Formula Future appear in an update at some point. So that's why I'm saying don't bother buying this car. 1200 gold is a lot of gold to spend. When those events come around, you just have to buy some upgrades to earn the car. Much better. This is a monster. Absolute monster of a car. One of the harder ones to control in the game. Um, I drop my sensitivity to zero when I drive this car. All assists are off. Uh, as you can see, that's tilt B controls by the brakes on the left and the uh, gas on the right. And yeah, it takes a while to learn this car. You can oversteer this car anytime you want to. So even if you're going 436 kilometers an hour and you huck your device sideways, it's gonna snap loose. Unlike a lot of other cars that won't do that. However, I don't mind that. Once you get used to this car, it's very predictable. You know what it's gonna do, and it's always gonna do exactly what you want it to do. It's not as bad as some of the other open wheel cars pre-2019. So like the Ferrari F14T, the Ferrari um, 412T2. Those are a little bit harder to drive. They're more unforgiving at low speeds, but you, gotta be, you do have to be careful in this car. Now, we've warped ahead quite a lot. Uh, I'm about to have a problem, and that is I didn't anticipate him to be going so slow. That's a big hit, big crack right there. This is a delicate car. It will not take a lot of being bopped around. So what we don't know is, do I have stage one or stage two damage? Oh boy, another nudge. With, with no damage at all and no slip streaming, I can hit 436 down this strip. Now I had a little bit of slip streaming at the entrance. That's not going to affect things at all. Stage one damage, I should still be able to hit 424 by the end. Stage two, probably about 418 to 420 is the maximum you can hit. And it's not just top speed that you lose, you also lose acceleration, grip, and brakes. So in this car, the brakes are so insane that you don't really notice the fall off. And the grip is so insane, I do notice the grip falling off a little bit. So I, I do have to be a little bit more careful. In fact, when this car has maximum damage, I actually drive it deeper in the corners uh, because the speed suffers more than the brakes. So the, the brakes are just shocking in this car. Uh, engine braking is shocking in this car, but then the actual brakes are also, it, it's just crazy. So we're, we're going pretty far already. Ooh boy, little tap like that. It, that's the worst place for that to happen. Um, I wouldn't be passing anyone until probably two corners from now, but I still, we're gonna warp anyway. Obviously I was able to keep going, Sometimes I had to get a little more aggressive than others. Sometimes my timer is running out in the Porsche curves, and that's where the bots over break, so you can catch up to them. Porsche curves are coming up here in a little bit, in the little warp here. And the next set of corners, like all the curves, Porsche banner. That's where we're getting to Porsche curves. In fact, we're gonna do a double warp as we go through the Porsche curves. But you'll notice here, like that even here, the bots slow down quite a lot. Um, well, I mean, we're gonna warp ahead again. And it's usually, it's out of this exit that sometimes, let's see, this guy's a little bit too far away. I don't think I'll catch him. I'll catch him slipstream though. 
And I probably could have done a pit maneuver, but uh, I won't bother. It's a, it's a fun race. Honestly, it took me a long time to feel comfortable here. Another warp right at the line. So lap 15, let's warp to lap 16. Getting pretty far. 250 is the goal today. And we'll get there soon enough. So here, I got it. That's often where my races end. Sometimes I actually hit the Dunlop Bridge. Oh, that sucks. So you got to be careful with that. Now here, I'll catch a little bit of slipstream and I'll try to slingshot around him. That is a lot of fun. Again, awesome car. Um, undamaged and slipstreaming. I've hit 450 kilometers an hour going down here. You got to encounter the bots just the right time, but it's possible, which is very fast. It goes above this car's top speed. Slipstreaming definitely is real, both getting a pull and a push. So it's definitely worthwhile. You see me utilizing it a lot, uh, diving in front of a car and getting a bit of a push getting a bit of a toe and doing a slingshot like let's see here in this chicane i should catch someone see what if you're not familiar with this after the 40 second car or after the perpetual point every bot is faster than fully upgraded however they still do not corner very well so that is where the advantage is now this is going to be the the ending section here i definitely made mistakes but there's a big gaggle of bots i would be able to keep this going if i wanted to but my goal was 250. Uh, it's very intense to, to, to race, to do this race. I don't like taking breaks because it's hard to get back into the action, to get back into the flow. So I don't like taking breaks. It's kind of just sit and get it done. So I'm gonna throw it. I wanna end it exactly 250 just because. Yeah, go back and give back a little bit. You drive the wrong way, you give it back. Let's check the damage. And you can see, oh, very scraped up. Oh, actual damage to the fiberglass. Or is this carbon fiber? I don't know, it's either, it's a fantasy car, so it's neither. Anyways, huge amount of scratches everywhere. So let's get to the profitability. Let's see if I did better than my old standard. Actual race time, 43 minutes, 24 seconds. I hired the manager, I hired the agent, because that's what you're gonna do if you do a long race. And check this out, 7,775 fame per minute, 27,885 R per minute. That's amazing. Please like, please subscribe. Thanks for joining me today. Bye-bye now.